Finally! 7k Dreamer, please! Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at the flaws 33 to 36 of Tartarus which just got expanded. So but first we're gonna look at our masteries. For the first page that was all up. For the second page you may want to switch the level 65 to increase crit damage but I think switching it down to decrease HP is also very beneficial so that you can, you can actually save on uh, doing so much damage. So this page 3 it is mostly up except for 90 you can... I think you can flip it up, yeah. For the final page, for 1 and 5 you want to increase because you're going to face a lot of offensive and magic heroes. For 1, 2, 0, flip it up so they do more damage. For 1, 5, 3, 0, flip it down because we are using Teo in this video. And for 1, 4, 0, you can flip it up. Okay, so that's about it and we are going to look at floor 33. You have battery who eliminates but there's no elimination taking place in Tartarus so don't worry about that. But it does do quite a bit of damage and may kill your heroes. And for the first round, we have Mercure and Sylvester and Brans and Branzo, three Berserk heroes in total. And we have Cork, who is very annoying, and she has a HP cap, so she takes damage not exceeding 20% of max HP. So that is why we cannot use B Dam because B Dam only has one hit, and it will be very inefficient to use B Dam against Cork. So we have to use a DPS with more hits so they can deal more damage to Cork in a shorter period of time. And that's why we are using Tio. So basically for the rest, you have Cow over here and for Cow, you will definitely want to use Yonhi because you don't want all the damage chains to be inflicted on you because Yonhi provides immunity for chain transfer, right? Damage transfer, I mean. For you have Fire Element, not, not a big issue. And then you also have Platine who has Nestra Blessing so that's why Tara is here. She can get rid of the shield very easily and also prevent Ace from surviving 1 HP. Okay, so I'm gonna go through my equipment. For Tio, we have double lethal and double counter. He also have a willful ring with crit damage increase and his jewels are as such. This is a very recommended stuff. Jewel skill cooldown, PvE damage increase and PvE critical lethal damage increase. This will maximize his damage output as much as Tio can. Of course, there's a PvE physical attack jewel but it's not here currently. And for his traits, I've actually given him increased crit damage, increased lethal damage and increased damage that are magic heroes because you're gonna face a lot of magic heroes. So, I know this is quite a buffed up Tio but if you don't buff Tio up like that is going to be very challenging for you and those are my soul skills and exclusive item respectively. So for the front line, very importantly for Eileen, it's the Willful Ring. Okay, Basically, you can give her HP armor as well but nothing too much. Even for Amelia, just the Willful Ring will be good enough. Okay, Yonhi Guardian Ring, I removed all her counter armor so that Tio can actually try to counter more but actually Yonhee herself at 80% increase in counter, so she will still be the main counter unit even without counter armor and counter traits, okay? For Tara, Guardian Ring is the most important. And basically that's it and we are gonna proceed into the run right now. This took me like 27, 26 tries because I kept leaving at the first stage. Why? You will see later. First off, start off with Aqua Blaster. This is to inflict the incapacitation on all your Berserk heroes so that they don't break into Berserk and waste your time. And then the next thing is to cast Tio's top skill, okay? Why the top skill? Because you cannot cast the bottom skill. Sylvester and Cord are immune to piercing. So this will kill off Sylvester and Mercure straight away already. And the damage jewel is very important, the PvE damage jewel, because it really buffs your damage so much that you can kill them in one shot. So over here, I'm trying to use skills that do not pierce so I can inflict more damage on Cult. And if you can see, Brunz and Brazil cause a lot of damage right here. Okay, sometimes your Eileen may die at this point, but don't worry, she will still get her revival uh, in the next stage. So again, Tio's top skill only. So at this point, Cult is the only surviving one. And this is why I kept leaving because she kept killing my heroes. Sometimes she killed my Yon here, I have no idea why. So here I'm just trying to take down Cult with random skills so that I can preserve Tio's attacks for the next round. Okay, so the same strategy for the next round, use Tara's Aqua Blaster to inflict incapacitation. This is to actually prevent the Alim and the Cow from living on 1 HP. After that, you can use Talent Strike and this will immediately kill off all everybody. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
And all you left with is Alim. So why did he kill off all? Because that round wasn't too hard. Because Liu Bu didn't have three physical heroes that gives him like a lot of shields. The second round is really easy if you have Tara. For the third round, same strategy because you want to remove Nestra Blessing from Platine and you also want to incapacitate Ace so that he won't live on 1 HP. And this will make your life easier as well. Same strategy also. After that, prepare to queue for Talon Strike and uh, Corvus. And hopefully you don't get hit by the elimination from battery. Another thing is that Orly, if you don't kill her before she uses her Waken skill, she will have evasion and that will be very problematic. So I was very lucky right here, my covers actually triggered Wild Fury and also killed off the battery so it was all slain in one attack and that is very very lucky. So if you are uh, lucky enough, you can also get a very fast run like this and, and thanks to my guild leader actually who gave the suggestion. So over here, I'm swapping out Tara for Rachel and Yonhi for Ace and this will actually be my standard team for the next 3 rounds, okay? So I know that there's an Earth Element here but not to worry, Wild Fury can actually do a lot of damage on the Earth Element so you don't actually need fixed damage to kill the Earth Element, okay? Later on, you guys will see that. If you really can't uh, have a strong TO, then you can actually use Spike instead. Okay, you can use Spike because he deals fixed damage on the highest defense on the enemy team which is going to be the Earth Element. So he will definitely inflict the fixed damage on the Earth Element to kill it. The reason why I'm bringing Rachel is also to buff the damage of Wild Fury. Okay, because Rachel has increased crit damage and lethal damage, right? So here we have Atalanta. She has consumer for 6 turns and also protects allies from 5-man AoE. We cannot use Teo's top skill. We have Berserk. The second round is basically very death oriented. Uh, but not to worry, very not very threatening heroes. You have Spike, you have Ingrid. Ingrid is not threatening at all. So we are just going to proceed into the run. And I'm going to explain the strategy along the way. First off, start out with Talon Strike. This will cast all the block nullification. And if you're lucky, Teo will do more speed attacks. And this will actually trigger more Wild Fury for you and it will make your life much, much easier. So over here, I used the Blaze because I tried to um, get Rachel's Awakened skill up quickly so that my Teo can actually deal more damage and my Wild Fury can also hit a lot more. So here where Wild Fury is all going to be triggered, kills off two people already. So you see how efficient this is. This is very similar to the Celestial Tower Guides which I have shown you. Teo is a very very good DPS in this case because Wild Fury just hits so freaking hard. Sometimes my Teo doesn't counter which is a pity. Okay, but thankfully when he hits, it is super hard. And I realized I did not bring down Atalanta's Consumer right here. So this is something you want to start doing right from the start after you have, you know, maybe inflicted the, inflicted the block nullification. Okay, otherwise this part could have been much, much faster. I don't have to waste time trying to bring her down. And wasting my talent strike on her. <laughs> so in the second round, this is a pretty tanky floor. And Teo is gonna be very good here because he will cast the block nullification on heroes like Cal Heron and Nox who have full block. Okay? And do be careful over here. If you previously your HP is reduced and you get hit by death, then you will die in one hit okay if death procs through your immunity but the strategy is the same just keep going for talon strike and covers talon strike and covers and eventually uh they will and eventually teo's wild fury will proc and i think they fixed it because i remember when i was doing raid with teo wild fury didn't trigger after a skill but now it does so you know maybe it's it's a very good thing of course Don't <laughs> So unfortunately, I don't have cooldown increase jewel on my Teo here, but you can give cooldown increase, okay, so that you know you won't be subjected to this. 
And uh, I got infected with death unfortunately because of a lot of bath durations And thankfully I'm able to kill off the Mercure and the Nox with one ace skill Okay, if not I'm gonna be in big trouble So for round 3, also very simple straightforward run Talent Strike, Carvers It is time you can use uh, Teo's Awaken skill as well If you feel that you know that's the right opportunity too so it's very quick that Brans and Branza already break into the Berserk So with one covers, you can actually remove the Berserk because their Berserk is only 3 turns So it's nothing compared to Sylvester and Mercure's Berserk at all So after we will trigger and kill off Kirill Coming with a Talent Strike, it kills off Ingrid and Brans and Branzo. Amelia is problematic because she gets 7 Void Shields at 1 HP so in this case, if you decide to use Tara over Rachel, it is also possible because Tara will help you deal with the Amelia, help you deal with the Brands and Branzo. And earlier we had Mercure as well, so Tara is still very useful in this run. And definitely you can keep Tara in this lineup if you wish. So here we are at floor 35 already. The most important thing here is Nurja, she has Reflect. So you want to give your Teal Reflect Immunity Jewel. And then we also have Kagura, she has double piercing on her skills. So if you have double piercing on her skills, you want to give Rachel over here a Guardian Ring. Mine has agility and I think it's super useful. If you actually have this combination, you can actually try to give it to Rachel. Very very good. And um, basically you don't want Rachel to die if Kagura skills. Okay? Rachel will die if Kagura uses her piercing skill. So over here I'm changing out my Teo's Jewel, giving him Reflect Immunity. Okay, very important to have this, otherwise it's going to be very challenging for you to make it through the third round. The rest of the heroes you face are pretty familiar faces already by now. Okay, after 5 flaws, 5 new flaws, so not to worry too much. Again over here we have Orly though. If Orly activates her Awakened Passage, she will get Evasion. That's going to be very problematic because I don't have an Accuracy Increased Hero like Yon here on my side of the field. Okay. But we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so Kagura actually hits through willful rings. So if you saw just now, Rachel only took one hit. So agility and guardian ring, very good combo. Worth, very worth investing in. So Orly here changes my formation, but not to worry at all. Wild Fury just hits so hard still. Now I really really need to kill off the Orly before she gets into evasion mode. And I can't do that but Wild Fury does it for me. So by now I think Atalanta pretty much dead. Yeah, because I already casted two covers earlier. So she has no more consumer and you can kill her with basic attacks. The thing about Teo is that with double lethal build, he doesn't really do his speed attack. So if you are really lucky, then that's very really good. My guild leader actually gave him one speed and one lethal, which is something you can consider as well. And over here, I'd like to thank Wombat for suggesting this strategy as well. He came out with this brilliant team. Oh, Corvus killed 4 people, that is how strong, even though Teo is on the front line. Like, can you imagine that? But we are down to Battery, who is very, very problematic. Very, very problematic. And she hasn't done her elimination, which you will see later. Unfortunately, I cannot kill her. She heals back to full health. Thankfully, nothing happened. It is very likely she can kill one of your heroes because it has happened to me a few times. But thankfully, nothing happened. So here is where we face Nurja. Talent strike from the get-go to get all your block nullification up. So, you know, in case any chance for a counter comes along, you can easily trigger Wild Fury. And he doesn't counter. So sad. Yushun dies. Nurja heals yeah. 
Power of agility. If this was a willful ring, Rachel would be dead. If she didn't have agility, she would probably take 4 hits, right? So Yushun is actually quite bulky, but because of his immunity, so piercing skills work very well here. Yep, so the I think the strategy is pretty much, you know, quite obvious what's going on. It's just the Wild Fury, making sure Teo counters. And this is for floor 36, we have Teo and Sylvester on the last round, pretty interesting duo. And then we have Colt, Annoying Colt. And then we also have a couple of Void Shield heroes like Roro and Amelia, which you need to remove from the get-go. And then the rest, Chancellor and Sylvester himself actually increase skill cooldown. So over here, I'm going to put the cooldown increase jewel on my Teo and this is something you should be doing as well. Okay, remove the reflect immunity jewel. But I have to say that I actually forgot this. So in the run later, which is now, you will see that my Teo actually got inflicted with cooldown increase. Okay, so that's why I'm reminding you to put the cooldown increase jewel. Blossom Strike from the start. Okay, we miss Blossom Strike, don't we? Blossom Strike will remove Void Shoes from Melee and Roro and this lets you hit them much much easier later on. After your Talent Strike, it's always to cast your Teo's top skill. Okay. And uh, let Wild Fury and Teo's counter do the other parts of the job in clearing the field. <laughs> Boom! So one by one, they just go down like that. You don't even need to do too much. Do know that I don't have the skill cooldown jewel on Teo. So his cooldown timing is solely based on guild buff, guild in buff, kale, soul skills, and uh, masteries. And I think it's all very nicely timed. So Blossom Strike again to get rid of whatever Void Shields. Even though I think this floor, there aren't any Void Shields to get rid of, so I'm basically just increasing damage inflicted then. Eileen is very brittle here, so she'll keep facing the Wild Fury and dying to it. <laughs> Corvus will kill off my cult, which is great because I cannot stand cult. If she survives, honestly. Lupu dies, Eileen dies. Increase skill cooldown right here. Thankfully, my Teo countered and also killed off the Cow Heron conveniently with Wild Fury. So, here is the final stage. We are going to tackle with Talent Strike first. Inflict all the bug notification in the world. Corvus is a very painful skill. So over here, it killed off one of the elements already, Wild Fury. And then Corvus is gonna kill off Teo because Teo doesn't have damage block outside of PvP, so that's something you can feel assured about. The only thing now is to get rid of the Berserk on Sylvester. And you can only do this by buff reduction because you don't have Tara right here. So buff reduction from Ace and uh, Amelia. This will be sufficient enough. You can also use Eileen if you want. Eileen also has buff reduction. And of course, Teo himself has buff reduction. Buff duration reduction. And you know, if, you, if you're lucky, you get a few couple of Wild Furies hitting on the Sylvester. And this will also reduce his Berserk mode by 3 turns. So this is almost there. We're almost there. And this kills him. Okay, so that was actually four flaws. Four flaws covered. So I hope this video has helped you. And if it did, do give it a like and do subscribe to my channel. I'll definitely be covering the other four flaws very soon. Do give me some time. These are pretty challenging, especially I heard flaw 38 and flaw 40 are particularly difficult. So do stay tuned. Thank you so much, and I'll see you.